Hello and welcome to Looking for Fucking Randy. I'm Moss. I'm Mantis. We're, and we're a, looking for Randy. Yes, we're on a wild swan chase. You want to ask Ticket Jerry? So my thoughts are that Ticket Jerry and Pierre. Okay. I use uh, the sad keys. Oh. It's you. Hi! <laughs> Hi, Ticket Jerry. You look nice today. Stop that. What do you want? Can I ask you a question, Ticket Jerry? Since I'm not allowed to leave this booth and I am unable to physically compel you to leave through the glass legally, the answer is yes. It really scared you. <laughs> the glass. Ah. Have any thoughts <laughs> Does it really scare you if I bang on the glass? No, I. Uh, I guess it might if you bang really hard on the glass while I wasn't expecting it. That's not an invitation. Don't do that. <laughs> Bang on the glass. Um, uh, I mean... <laughs> I'm calling the police! Shit! <laughs> Wait, no, don't call the police! <laughs> Scamper away yelling like a woman. Ticket Jerry, I need to ask you! I <laughs> I'm starting to wonder, uh, also, if, um... If you're persistent enough and come back to take a Jerry enough times, will he still say no? Because it keeps popping up a route lost. <laughs> yes. Okay, after two visits, it might be time to let Jerry be. I simply refuse. Enjoy simply spending a month in prison. Mm. I must figure out how to unplug narrator. I'm not a machine. I'm not connected to an electrical socket. I cannot be unplugged. Bastard. What now? Approach the- ah! <laughs> Okay, if we do that, we should probably say- Fine, I'll see. Unless you think that, uh, uh, you, we, we can go back through, uh, uh, see the other options with Jerry. I mean, maybe. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, officers, that's them, all right. <laughs> Take a Jerry! Who are these handsome gentlemen? <laughs> there are some friendly officers from the Dialtown Police Department trespassing Goblin. Are they here to help me find Randy? What? No, you idiots. <laughs> They're... I give up. Please, just take them away. I beg of you. Cuff them, Larry. <laughs> Larry? <laughs> should I... Should I... What, what should I do? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Hey, Larry. No, don't hit me, Larry. This, this one. one's Larry. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. One of the many endings where you go to prison. <laughs> there are multiple. <laughs> Do we want to go try and ask Ticket Jerry more questions? Or uh, just accept that uh, Ticket Jerry does not want to talk to us? I just want to ask him where Randy is. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Hey, you have any idea where Randy could be? Well, if I was coerced into going on a date with you, I think I'd be hiding too. Huh? <laughs> Granted, I'd be hiding from you right now if I were allowed to leave this booth. That's me. If he was hiding, I'd find him, no problem. <laughs> I don't know what that implies, Phone Gigi. 
That's mean. And repeated workplace harassment isn't. Quantifiably, I say you're the meanie here, pal. Look, I know Randy used to work at the burger place downtown before he got tangled up in his current web of poor life choices. Oh, hey, it now, the, 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 the sign now says one for one, as opposed ah! to two for one. <laughs> Perhaps you can ask there. A lead at last! Thanks, Jerry! I don't know how to repay you! How about clearing off before I have to call the police? <laughs> I don't respond well to threats, Chicken Jerry. I am calling the police! <laughs> <laughs> okay, after two visits, it might be time to let Jerry be. Why is Jerry so rude? Well, it could be from you abruptly and routinely assaulting his work space with your unsolicited presence. My presence is delightful! You could turn milk sour just by bathing near it. Just as a father is not responsible for the crimes of his children, I am not accountable for the actions of my various bodily molds and fungi. <laughs> a father is most definitely responsible for how his kids turn out. You are most definitely accountable for how much of a biohazard you are. Bastard. <laughs> what now? Let's go to downtown Dial Town. You get off this time, Pierre. <laughs> I mean, I can go talk to Pierre. Fuck, where did I go? <laughs> It'd be up to you. If you want to find uh, Randy, it looks like we should go to that uh, burger joint. <laughs> oh, there's the burger place. We also haven't been to the apartment. No. May have something to do when we... Uh, uh, decide to pester uh, Karen next. That sounds fair. Oh, no, we can't ask Pierre. Uh, Pierre we, does not know. I suppose we have also found out where to go from uh, That is Jerry. true. That could also be a thing. Bunny's Burgers. Huh. Well, Phone Gigi, can you see Randy in there? No one in, the, in there is hunched over weeping, so no, doubtful. <laughs> Duh. That would have been a universal indicator, all right. See anyone in there running from swans or begging for change, perhaps? Alas, no to both. Do you have any other ideas? Alas, sniff I must, it seems. Sniffs relentlessly at the glass. <laughs> like a bloodhound. Bunny the Burger Man. Hey, you, we've spoken about this, you literal cryptid. Get away from the glass, or I'll. Randy! Randy. Yeah, what about him, then? Someone told me he used to work here. Well, yeah, he did. But I fired that lout a long time ago. Hasn't stopped him from burrowing under my skin, though, like the human tick he is. You know what they say, you give a man an inch, and then Randy lives in your dumpster. Oh, is that where he is? <laughs> I, pay, I ask him to pay rent. <laughs> Are you saying that Randy is in your dumpster right now? Yes. Huh. Odd. Hey, at least he pays rent, which at least... Hey, at least he pays rent, which means that he at least... <laughs> I know was with this part of the sentence. <laughs> uh. 
Hey, at least he pays rent, which means he at least compensates me for my wasted time, unlike some people. <laughs> inconsiderate scoundrels. <laughs> yeah, what inconsiderate scoundrels, right? Yes, yes. Be gone from me, green one. Bitch. <laughs> Mingus says, "Buy war Oh my god, Mingus is alive! <laughs> it's a moving poster. Mingus is some get, sort of eldritch entity. You get realize... your own trash! <laughs> you realize Mayor Mingus is a cat, right? Yeah. How long has that been a thing? Has that been a thing for a while? Uh, well, Pierre did say that she was rather catty, if you catch his drift. I, he, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here we are. Behold, dumpster. Where is he? There's a very purple dumpster. Call out to him, phone GG. Use your voice. Use your mating call. Randa! I summon thee! I like the idea that they can summon the bell sound. Yes. Hey, hold on a moment. I I'm coming. Please don't leave, unless you're an angry tax man, which case, please do. Hun, it's me! It's Phone Gigi! Oh, oh, Phone Lord! <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't go anywhere, hold on! <laughs> hey, Hun! It's so good to see you, oh, Phone God, I haven't even scrubbed the wax out of my receiver pores, I... You look nice. I doubt. <laughs> Fuck you, asshole! I look fucking split! <laughs> you garbage nectar soaked hunk! <laughs> what way do you want to give Randy a heart attack? <laughs> right? He's had a rough day. I'm gonna be nice to him. <laughs> You're not so bad looking yourself, my garbage nectar soaked hunk. Winky face. Please don't tell me that me being soaked in garbage juice is a turn on for you. Would you rather I despise you for it? <laughs> you can't. I like it. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather I despise you for it? To be frank, given the options, I think I would. <laughs> Then, uh, could at least pretend that you were a productive member of society. Poppycock, I'm so productive. It's kinda hard to do that with my green skin, though. I, I guess you got me there. Uh, well, welcome to Casa del Randy, I suppose. Don't bother wiping your feet. It'll just get filthy again as soon as you enter. Trash is my element, Randy! My feet literally can't get any dirtier! <laughs> I, I mean, I know you might smell like trash, but I just assumed it was, uh... Like, the smell of your egg-laying juices, maybe? That's speciesist! But alas, you are indeed correct, yes. <laughs> yeah, I assumed as much. I've never seen an egg being laid that didn't come out moist and... Oh boy, do swans churn a lot of those things out. Right, right. Swan eggs, indeed. This, uh... This whole poverty thing you've got going on! <laughs> you know, living in a dumpster, working awful jobs and whatnot. How did you end up in this boat? If my life's a boat, then it's the Titanic right now. Look, don't get me wrong, that's an excellent question, but boy oh boy do I not want to answer it. 
we can drop the topic if you're not comfortable. No, I, I'm never comfortable, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for the concern, but nah, I, I need to get all of this drivel off my chest. Might as well tell it to the local cryptid. Might I suggest getting out of the dumpster? <laughs> Yeah. You want to get something off your chest. Yes. I mean, not here. A gentleman doesn't just brandish his unmentionables in any whole burger place alley. Do you want me to come inside? Please do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How flirty do you want to be? I don't know. Time to take the plunge. Or just, you know, climb in like a sensible per- I've never been sensible in my life, Randy! So unsensible that moved the entire... <laughs> uh, like, text to the side. Yes. And I don't wish to change my wicked ways for you! A wool guy into the trash I go! Swan dives into the Swan trash. Swan dives?! Randy was horrified. <laughs> There's a chair in here! Well, here we are. Place looks uh, a little nicer from the outside, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it's... it has a unique charm. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Why is it say password omelette.exe? I don't know. The outside probably just looks better for me because half the time when I see the outside, I'm leaving home to go someplace nicer. Like work. Which is, come to think of it, really no nicer than here. Between being here or being mauled by swans, I'd blow my brains out. That's encouraging. Still, gonna jot that suggestion down for later, though. I'm going to take your book and pencil. Yo, you're not just gonna t write that down for later. Just in case. No, you're not. <laughs> so, uh, about that tragic backstory of yours. Oh, right. Uh, well, look. Much like myself, my life story is pretty needless and pathetic. You see, it all started when I was born. Unfortunately, I was born a mere infant at zero years of age. I think everyone is born a mere infant at zero years of age, Randy. <laughs> couldn't walk, couldn't talk, just lay in my own... Uh, feces till I got changed. But look how far you've come! These hatchlings like me can hunt right from the start. <laughs> I'm living in a dumpster! Exactly! <laughs> Nowadays you can walk, you can talk! And now you get to line other people's feces! Well, when you put it like that, I sound a solid 3% less pathetic! <laughs> I mean, that's not a whole lot, but... Uh, anything's better than zero. <laughs> it's still 3 whole percent less pathetic than I was 10 seconds ago. Weren't you telling me about your dreadful life? It just got 3% better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Well, you know, I've largely lived a perfectly adequate life. Perfectly adequate. Bordering on mediocre, that is. I had a admittedly rather lousy apartment. Worked full-time at the burger place whose dumpster we're squatting in right now. And then... One day, I decided to do something I'd rarely done before. I decided to try something new. What did you do, Randy? <laughs> what a crack pipe. 
I can already see this choice resulting in exponentially poor fortune for you. Well, that's not hard to see looking at my current surroundings. <laughs> Sorry, let me continue. I decided to go to the fun fair, the same one that you and I visited on our first date. What did the fun fair do to you? That, that fortune teller cursed me. <laughs> Oh, interesting. That explains how you knew and Ticket Jerry knew each other. How you and Ticket Jerry knew each other. I think there's an extra new in here. Oh, yeah, that sounds like the kind of uh, bad grammar phone <laughs> GG slash phone GG would use. That's fair. Yeah, Jerry's incredibly familiar with both me and the immense haze of misfortune that always seems to follow me around. He's my dad. <laughs> He's not, but... <laughs> By the way, Jerry really doesn't seem comfortable around you. He called the cops on me! Randy, can you believe it? I can. Can you believe it? He's right not to be! I bite! <laughs> so, do rapid street dogs and swans. I've never seen Jerry so much as consider calling animal control on those creatures. <laughs> Well, they can't talk. <laughs> Granted, if he did, it'd be me that turn up after he calls it, and then he'd just see me getting mauled by warring hounds and swans from the other side of the glass. So he isn't cruel. <laughs> anyway, visiting the fun fair with my then date turned out to be a truly abysmal idea. Did a clown honk at you? <laughs> Did a clown honk at you? No, no, I... C clowns aren't even real. What is the clown lore of Dial Town? <laughs> they aren't real. Or, so the government wants us to think. Sorry, continue. Well, after realizing I was... Too much of a shameless coward for any ride that moved faster than the hot dog stand, which was stationary. Ah! I realized that my date was getting really bored with my crippling cowardice. As I desperately gazed around the nearby vicinity for an attraction, any attraction I was brave enough to go on, I noticed something off in the not-so-distant distance. An old fortune teller animatronic inside a tacky purple pine and glass case cast aside in a barely lit corner of the fun fair, far away from the other attractions. Ah, here we go. This is starting to make sense now. I feel like I'm about to find out why you bailed on a, the end of our date. Yeah, the thing is, the thing looked half desert, and you know what? It probably was being a tacky animatronic shoved into a barren corner of the fun fair. From what I could see, only spiders and mold seemed to take much notice of the machine. But even the name of the machine fits its appearance. Atom Mediocre. I felt drawn to it, as if the machine and I were somehow kindred. Anywho, deciding to approach that thing ended up being a train wreck and a half. Did the machine fall on your foot or something? No, I... Did it steal your date? That would have been better. <laughs> Not literally, no. Then what happened? I was getting to that part. I crept over to the old machine and carefully slipped a quarter into its coin slot. My last quarter. And just like that, the machine sprang to life, lights and all. 
Then a hazy pre-recorded voice emanated from the small speaker embedded in the mannequin's torso. Place your hands upon my glass and I shall read your aura and gaze upon your future. I was terrified, admittedly. I mean, I already had a real live woman next to me as is. Might as well have been a triple date at that point. Randy, I don't think it's a triple date. <laughs> my date reassured me and slowly outstretched both of my hands to place them against the murky old glass of the machine. The moment my palms so much as brushed the surface of the glass, the machine started screaming at me as if I just set off an air raid siren. Same words over and over again at a deafening volume. <laughs> Your future is forfeit. You will die alone and miserable. Go F yourself. Well, damn, Randy. Over and over and over again. So that old thing can't tell the future. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's actually pretty funny. My poor baby. Wait for it. It gets How worse. How the does it get worse, Randy? I'm not gonna lie, what followed wasn't exactly my finest hour. And foam god forbid my tortured, shriveled gonads actually managed to spew out any kids. I don't want them remembering me for this after I'm gone. What what did you do, Randy? Well, my fight or flight response kicked in. I screamed like a prepubescent girl and throttled the machine. And then the machine fell on your foot. Why do you keep insisting the machine fell onto my foot? So you're saying it definitely didn't? In a way, I guess it did. The machine fell straight on top of me, whole body. Okay, yep, that's the <laughs> kicker. The machine kept wailing for the entire... You okay? Uh, 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 not actually wailing for the entire ordeal? Yeah. Uh, uh, machine kept wailing for the entire ordeal. I was pinned under it. It took four men to lift the machine off me. Randy. How strong were you that you toppled it? Yeah, really. I was pretty banged up, but hey, I noticed that my head was just about in one piece, meaning I was still very much alive. A Christmas miracle! It wasn't Christmas. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I stumbled around and Admittedly, having a pretty gnarly concussion. Did anyone call an ambulance? My date asked if I was okay, and I, uh, uh kinda stumbled hand first and grabbed her memory melons. Whoops. Which she responded to by screaming and pushing me, causing me to fall backwards hitting my already damaged head on a nearby rock, which caused my entire head oh, to shit. be cleaved in twain and my circuits and wires to spill out. Hey boy. And then they called an ambulance! No. <laughs> you spilled your disgusting cranium innards all over the place? God, how embarrassing! What is it like in a world where your head can crack open and people would call that embarrassing? Yeah. And not horrifying. I woke up in the emergency room a few days later. Apparently the doctors just about managed to patch me back up with some... considerable difficulty. Oh? 
Well, the blunt trauma of the impact kinda dented and broke most of my internal turnerables. My brains and whatnot, you know. You literally have brain damage. Extensive brain damage. Extensive brain damage, Randy. The docs were able to just about get everything back in one piece, but really struggled to fit the misshapen parts back into my head. They just sort of scooped it. Sh- <laughs> little sweeper. Just shoved it all back in there. The mi- <laughs> Dr. Knife! <laughs> Dr. Scalpel, actually. Dr. Scalpel here. <laughs> <laughs> the main surgeon bandaged my head back up and chatted to me while applying the bandage. <laughs> mentioned in passing that due to the difficulty of getting all the bits of brain, skull, broken glass, and phone pieces back into my head, that if I took the bandage off for even a second, kaboom! Oh my god! The doctor put dynamite in your head?! (laughs) No, he meant that my head would explode on its own. You know, pop like a gigantic oozing pimple. So that's why you're wearing that bandage even now. What? No, we're gonna say the first one, but I I think... I I choose to believe that... Yeah. Running in phone, Gigi's mind is hot, 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 hot. So that's why you're wearing the bed. <laughs> yes. Correct. Even now, if I were to take it off for even a moment. What I don't get is why your bandage has fuck face written on it. Oh, right. That. Well, there's this little kid called Billy. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, while the doc put the finishing touches on the bandages, I was telling him about my evening from my mediocre day to the machine falling on me. And the doc laughed. Did it was quite a small oh, world. No. Oh. Cause his daughter had been on a date at the same fun fair on the same night as the accident. And that her date had also been crushed by a fortune-telling machine before groping her, falling backwards, and then... (laughs) Oh dear. (laughs) Well, at that point, the doctor realized just how small the world really was and decided to write F-face across my bandage because of the whole groping his daughter fiasco. I'm kind of, like, again, like, I get it, but also, like, a little, like, couldn't she tell that he was disoriented? Apparently not. Apparently she has watched every anime ever, (laughs) and it's just like, ah, well, there's clearly no possible way that this could have been an accident. (laughs) Yeah. Yikes. Why didn't she just, you know, wash it off? I tried, believe me, as soon as I got home, I tried. Couldn't have gone to work with F face ran across my forehead. Getting fired would have meant losing my only source of income and my admittedly lousy but only place to live. I really feel like Randy some duct tape would have done you Yeah, like duct tape. Duct tape over the band. <laughs> You can't take it off anyway. Yeah. Oh, come on, it couldn't have been that hard to get some marker off a bandage. It... it's deep in the fibers. I tried water, soapy water, bleach, drain cleaner... You probably shouldn't put bleach on your face, but I guess your face is a phone. I would have just drank the drain cleaner, admittedly. Sorry, continue. Ignore me and my weird eating habits. Well, I must have passed out from the drain cleaner fumes, cause I, uh... 
I turned up for my shift at the burger joint three days late, high as a kite, oh, no. and holding a possum in my arms. Oh no. Needless to say, Bunny fired me on the spot. Yeah, that'll do it, all right. <laughs> so then I ended up losing the apartment and, you know, I lost my job, lost my apartment, lost my self-respect and my hope for a better future, but I gained a possum. A fair exchange! No, please tell me you kept the possum. I did not keep the <laughs> I didn't so much keep it, it just kind of followed me home. Where is it? I want to see the little possum. I think it believes that I'm its mother. Oh, it loves you! It keeps screaming at its own A, it just keeps screaming! <laughs> and it knows no love, only screaming. Oh hey, there he is right now! That would be awesome. <laughs> Squalor. To make a trash nest for that bowl. <laughs> is he a... Is he got a book for a head? He does. Truly engaging pastime. How to break up narrative monotony with miscellaneous cutaway gags. He's adorable! He's flea-ridden! You're just jealous! Of what? His fleas? Of how much I care about him. I'm not- I mean... You've just met him! And i die for him, Randy! Look, possum antics aside, I... I've been renting this dumpster from my old boss since it's technically the cheapest property in town. And I still barely make enough to pay that hungry bass gougy rent, which, with how much money I lose from getting mugged by hostile birds, losing tips by depressing the weirdo customers who call the phone sex hotline, I... I can't stand for this anymore. This place is depressing enough as is, and Living why I'm here just made me realize this this right I'm gonna die in here cuddling a discard body pillow in a randy made nest comprised solely of used syringes and old newspaper. Statistically improbable. That's the spirit go wild, Randy. <laughs> That's the spirit go wild, Randy. Stick it to the man. Yeah, who knows? Maybe it'd finally kill me. Not like that, Randy! <laughs> Wouldn't that be a sweet release? I need to get out of here. I want to see the world. I'm gonna watch an awful movie made by Oliver. <laughs> okay, scratch that. The world is scary and hostile and I'm made out of paper and other such fragile things. No, 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 Randy. You're made out of a bandage. <laughs> <laughs> bandage and poorly put together plastic. <laughs> I need to see somewhere that isn't here. I... Hang on a second. How long have we been talking for? About, like, 30-some minutes. I'm late for work, aren't I? Oh no, oh god, no, 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 no. You're off the chain now, Randy. <laughs> I, I was wondering why I couldn't find you at the park, to be frank. You knew I slept in and you didn't tell me? I thought you were going wild, Randy! Cutting loose! Are you crazy? I could lose my dumpster, it's all I have left! You could come live in my tent! Oh, oh god, there's somehow a place even lower for me to sink to! I can't go back to the streets, man. I I reek of desperation. Actual alpha male thugs will smell my whimper and cowardice and instantly attempt to mug me. But when they realize I have nothing left to take, they'll take their frustration out by taking turns hitting me over the head with the garbage can lids. Specifically the lids? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry not, I'll protect you from them, hun. 
Oh, sure. So, you spit cryptic acid onto a few thugs for me, but what then? What of my life? I don't know what I'm gonna do if I lose this job. I need to get to work. I'm sorry to just ditch you like this. You, you deserve better. You've been nicer to me than anyone else so far, and I have no idea why. I cannot fathom it. Can't fathom why the okay. local cryptid would hang out with you. <laughs> okay, fine. You haven't actually been that consistently nice to me. But I have nobody else left. So, this is goodbye then? Uh, for a whole five or so hours till my shift at the park is over, uh, yes. Wait a second. Dude, I live in a tent at the park! Wait, did you say that you dwell in a tent at the park? Oh dear, that's quite unfortunate. You live in a dumpster, Randy! <laughs> <laughs> I think you're honor bound to select that one. <laughs> you live in a dumpster, Randy! I win as far as I'm concerned! <laughs> okay, very fair. I guess I have no room, eh? You know, it ain't such a bad life anyway, Randy. No rent, greedy landlords, annoying roommates. Minus my close proximity to the drug dealers and hostile pond birds. And not a bad gig? Yeah, no thank you. As awful as this dumpster is, if I had to spend another second at that park than necessary, I'd just end up ripping this darn bandage off. Right, but then you wouldn't have fuckface on your forehead anymore, though. I'm not sure how that's a encouraging phone gene. Yeah, and my brains would spill out. But then you wouldn't be a fog face anymore, either! I'll just quickly jot that suggestion down, too. No, I'm taking your suggestion book. <laughs> but I mean... My point was, you're heading towards where I live. So we're actually going the exact same way, Randy. Why not make this, uh... A date. Oh, wow, we. A second date, that's never happened. <laughs> I've never been asked out on a second date before. It's kind of adorable. It is kind of adorable. <laughs> kind of dancing to the music, too. <laughs> I'm really bored. As if I'd be willing to use a, lose a cutesy, lovable bum like you. I think not, hon! Oh, baby. I am not botching this. A second date, I... Finally, something to cross off my bucket list. Right between head a smooth rock and die somewhere other than inside a fast food place toilet stall. That's a really miserable bucket list, Randy. We, yeah, uh, we can work on the rest of the list later. Well then, let's waste no time. After you, my sweet. Uh, just watch your step. The, uh, moisture trash can get quite slippery. What was that? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, um, uh, we oh, do have you to stop? stop. Oh, okay, we'll stop here then. Also, my voice is shut, Randy. <laughs> oh, no! I'm sorry. Hope you all had fun. Yes. After dumpster scene. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys next time. Yes, I'm starting to, to understand why the fandom likes Randy so much. Oh, definitely. Definitely.
thing. He's got a charm. He's, he's, he's a fun... This is a fun route. Yeah. He's no Oliver, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think everyone is kind, will be kind of attached to whoever they went with the first time. Yeah, that's probably. That's definitely true for me, typically. Like, uh, if, if I play any kind of, like dating simulator or even like like social link like you know kind of thing where you're like talking to people whoever is like the main first person like is always my favorite that's just always happens <laughs> yeah yeah anyway hey, hope you enjoy mm -mm. we will come back next week to finish up randy yes so we'll see you then <laughs>